what is the most embarrassing thing that you have messed up in the lab or teaching? I think my biggest mistake was an undergraduate when I tried to open a vacuum desiccator, a large glass vessel with a flat glass lid. The lid was stuck and it had a tap at the top and I decided to open this with compressed air. So I attached compressed air, switched it on and it worked beautifully. The lid shot up with a loud bang. But what I didn't realize beforehand that once the lid got to here, there was nothing to support it. So it came down with a huge crash and smashed to bits. I could have been killed. On periodic videos, what is your favorite video so far? I'm a scientist, not a journalist. Once a journalist, not Brady, said that for a journalist, the favorite story is the one they're working on at the moment. And once they've done it, it sort of fades into the background. So it's a bit like that for me. I hope every video when we make it is going to be one of the best. I think the single video that I think is funniest and which amused me most at the time and I still like is our original video about Hassium, where at the beginning I say, Hassium, I know nothing about Hassium. Should we make something up? I still like that video quite a lot. Can you think what molecule you have dealt with that has the most different elements in it? I always work with quite small molecules. I think there's some organic molecule with selenium in it. I can't even remember the name. It was yellow. And I think that had quite a lot of different elements in it. But quite honestly, chemists don't count the number of elements in their molecules. You tend to look at just one or two atoms near the center where the reaction's going to happen. And the rest is rather like my hair. You're aware about it, but you ignore it. Sometimes chemists even just call it shrubbery. That's like bushes. And so you never count the number of atoms. But now you've asked, probably I'll start madly counting atoms. What is your favorite element? This is a question I've been asked several times. And I have quite a few elements that I get quite excited about. There's xenon, which has been good to me, iron, which I've studied the photochemistry of this for a lot. I like the element sodium because its symbol, Na, is what my mother called herself as a little girl. She was called Ina, so she abbreviated it to Na, so I get a nice warm feeling whenever I see the symbol. I suppose at the moment I'm really excited about the element niobium. I've done very little research with niobium, but this morning a PhD student started in my research group and she's going to be studying chemistry of niobium. So I'm really excited about that. What molecule do you think is most interesting at the moment? I think a huge number of molecules are interesting. Carbon dioxide is very interesting because how are we going to deal with so much carbon dioxide in the world that we're making by burning fuels? The molecule that I think is particularly interesting is nitric oxide, the, the compound NO, which is very reactive. If you expose it to air, it reacts with oxygen, making clouds of NO2 almost instantaneously. But what's really intriguing about this molecule is that quite recently, and by quite recently I mean the last 25 years, it was suddenly discovered that this tiny molecule, NO, is absolutely vital in the function of organisms, particularly ourselves, because if NO is released in the bloodstream, it causes the blood vessels to expand. And so I've always thought it's extraordinary that this molecule that was just a chemical curiosity has suddenly been found to be really important in controlling the physiology of our bodies. What advice would you give to young students hoping to study chemistry in the future? That's quite simple. Enjoy yourself and learn as much chemistry as you can. You never know which bits are going to be useful. Of course, a lot of it is always going to be useless, but it's really that you need to know as much as you can. One of the really good pieces of advice I was given by one of my friends who's a bit older than me 
He said that you've got to imagine chemistry rather like a landscape, if you're walking with hills and so on. And if you want to be a really good chemist, you need to know about the shape of the landscape. You don't need to know every detail and so on, but you need to know the rough shape of the landscape so that you know which direction to go in if you want to get to a particular place. And therefore, the more you can explore chemistry, the better. How many water bottles are in your collection? I'm not sure, but I think it's over 300. And occasionally, a boring one falls down and it gets thrown out. Sometimes I get a really exciting one and I have to persuade my secretary that we can add it. I've just been to Senegal in Africa. I've brought two bottles back, but I haven't yet dared bring it into the office. But I think that plastic water bottles are really quite beautiful. And if they were really expensive, I think people would quite value them. There you go, everyone, for those who haven't seen it. That's just some of the collection. Are you proud of it? Yes, sometimes I'm slightly embarrassed, but it's quite fun. It's ruined my life. Every time somebody keep, gives me a bottle of water, I start looking at it like a bottle of wine and so on. I've even just recently written a scientific paper about two of the bo water bottles in this collection. Oh, that sounds like a video for another day. Brady and I and the rest of the periodic video team have got really quite excited because we've reached our 500th video. When we started out, we were just going to make a periodic table, 118 videos with an introduction and an advert, 120 in all, and we never dreamt that we'd be gone for so long or so many videos. And first of all, I really like to thank all of you who watch our videos, who send us comments, who even stop me or some of my colleagues in the street and tell us how much you enjoy the videos because this is a great reward to us to hear from you. But I'd also like to say that we shouldn't just be looking back, looking at what we've done in the past, because science is always moving forwards. And I'm really excited about what we can do in the next 500 videos. We've only touched on the number of molecules there are. There are all sorts of molecules which are crying out for videos, ammonia, some of the element videos are not very good, need to be redone. We have a high-speed camera now, so we can show you things which none of us have seen before. And we really want to keep you thinking about chemistry and understanding chemically more of what's going on around you in everyday life. So I hope you'll keep watching, and I look forward to talking to you all, and perhaps many more people as well, when we reach our thousandth video. It won't be long now. Also, I will say thank you to Professor Polyakov who does so much for these videos and lots of people write comments saying, you seem very kind and very wise and like a nice guy and, and you are. And also those people should know when the camera's off, Professor Polyakov is even kinder and nicer. So we're very lucky to have him, thank you. Thank you very much. Lovely.